So, you want to do a head gasket change, put it all back together in time chain without the nonsense. You're at the right spot. Let's go. Welcome back everybody, How I Did It Garage. This is part two on how to replace a head gasket or time chain on a 2012 Chevy Malibu or anything that has a 2.4 Ecotec. It took a while because I had to wait on the machine shop. It's a really good machine shop and they are really cheap. And of course, to get those two things, normally you got to sacrifice time. But that's okay. I know the vehicle solves and worried about it. So... Got the head back from the shop. He done a really great job. He decked it, replaced that valve right there. That's all I needed. He only charged me about 50 bucks to do that. A little tip on why you should always get it decked. I'll put right here a video of why you need to. If you did have head problems and you need to rework your heads, lap them in or check them, I got uh, two other videos showing how to do that. You can check those out on my channel. But now we're at this part what i'm gonna do now is go ahead and put the head back on and then start working on the chains i got all new chains and sprockets for everything and then from there put all that back together and start working on the front half and so far what i've done is i have cleaned this you want to make sure you clean this get it nice and smooth if you got any if it's set for a while like mine has and outside like mine has it might start accumulating rust because these are metal sleeves and aluminum block so i got a pad scotch right pad whatever you want to call it and i you know lightly brushed up against everything to try to get all the surface rust or anything that's on there clean the pistons up just a little bit and i got a razor blade lightly and lightly with out a whole lot of pressure at an angle about like this just went through and kind of scraped everything made sure everything was nice and smooth i got everything cleaned up now we're ready to put it on so all together i got three different kits off amazon uh, none of them came with the bolts i had to buy that separate besides these kits one kit has all new sprockets for everything the guides new tensioner for the timing chain new tensioner for the water pump chain uh pulleys bolts that you need and chain i will put a link for all these parts that i got and that i'm using in the description below I head gasket there's studs here and here. Set this on there. Like so. The four bolts is what's going to go in the front up here. Which is star pattern. I used 10 millimeter and it worked just fine. Get them hand started. these started just to get these started I want to use the impact but you don't want to use the impact to tighten it up and 15 millimeter for the other boats by the book right here where it says cylinder head this is the Torx right here and this is the sequence First you'll tighten down these to 22 foot-pounds, then you'll go back over it in the same sequence at 155 degrees, and then you'll work on the last four. Starting on one. That was a cheap part of the freight torque wrench. I got a snap on, but it is a larger one and it really uh, it's at the bottom for 22 foot pounds. But I want to go back over with this just to be sure. To get the 155 degrees, you can use this at the degree wheel, or you can, you know, mark it. This would be your zero, 180 would be right below it. So 155 would be just a little bit past it. You can mark it and just spin it until you get to that mark that you believe to be 155 if you don't have one of these. I only use one of these because I got it, so. You get it on there, get it right to where it's about to start tightening. Mark it at zero. And you'll spin it until you get to 155. If you don't have a torque wrench that's in foot pounds, you can always, you know, there's 12 inches in a foot, so you just times that. So this needs to be 26 foot pounds, just times that by 12, which would be 
312 inch pounds. 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm using a 10 millimeter for this because I don't have the star bit that goes on this. This is my nephew. I decided I'd have uh, some help come over. He'll help me do this and I'll help him learn some stuff. So I already got everything off besides the balance chain sprockets. All that came off pretty easy. Uh, for the time of chain sprockets, as it's indicated here, there's a little slot on the retainer ring that you're supposed to put. Uh, it don't say here, but a 3 sixteenths drill bit. I tried to use Allen wrench, but it didn't work. Put the drill bit up against the sprocket while loosening this up, which is 15 millimeter. The intake side, you can see pretty easy from up here as far as lining up the drill bit. You just reach down here. You can put it into place and then hold it and loosen it up. The other side you can't see so good. That's where it's located at. Probably about 130. <laughs> you might be able to get it from the bottom easier but I don't feel like crawling at the bottom so I did it all from the top. So this is what it looks like in there. That goes on your crank. That's your water pump. That's the tensioner right here. That is your intake side balance shaft sprocket and your exhaust side shaft sprocket. First I'm going to put on the water pump sprocket, then the balance shaft sprockets, uh, then the oiler, and then from there I'm not sure, I might try to chain on before I put these, but I'll figure it out. Also, your sprockets, the, uh, the kit that I got is not labeled intake or exhaust, but there's R and the L. The R is the exhaust and the L is the intake. Alright, so I finally got the balance shaft chain back on the way I did it is I got all the sprockets on there, got the chain on it, put the tensioners on, or the guides on, then the tensioner. And it's pretty basic as long as you get all the marks lined up with the teeth as the notches or the arrow, it's going to work out. But I'll show you what it is. That's what it'd be like on the intake side. What the book recommends, it recommends that there's that little notch on the top. Line the arrow up with that, and then put everything on, little bits on each of the intake and exhaust balance shaft sprockets to hold it in place. Uh, if you're having difficulties, you could do that, but I just made sure the link was, was where they were supposed to be and it worked out. It kind of moved a little bit on me, but if the sprocket was moved, the arrow would be on that black mark right there. And on the crankshaft, the colored link is on the dot on the sprocket. Now, go ahead and put this sprocket back on. Dimple facing out, of course, so you know how to time it. I think we're back together now. It's time to put the cams in, put the cam sprockets on, and put the timing chain on. This is the one that this part right here I'm a little bit worried about, but uh, I think it should be all right. As long as you got your crank down at six o'clock and all these other ones lined up correctly, it should be fine. But a little tip uh, with me having this off, I've had this off for two weeks and I've had this in different areas, you know. Uh, plus I went to the machine shop. I want to go back through and check these little spots where the cam goes make sure none of them's got bent over because this is where your, your your cam rides. So you look at the way this is You know, this gets nicked. That's gonna You can see right there. I've already grinded this one down before because I nicked it. I had to grind it back so just check all these make sure They're not bowed over or Got any burrs leaning in that could cause premature failure, or catastrophic failure, whatever way you want to look at it. You want to get your valve flash adjusters, place them all in there. I went ahead and pre lubed them with some lube, or you can use motor oil. Put them in there. Of course, you want to check all of them for wear or whatnot. Then you get your caps. At this point, you're ready to put your cams on. After you get your rockers and your last adjusters in there, put your cam in there with your lube. I used high temp grease, might not be right for it, but that's what I used. Um, the book recommends that you put the center caps in first, then tighten them down. Your caps is numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's arrows on them, they're supposed to be facing this way. Make sure you get this where the 
get over the intake side is at about two o'clock. The exhaust side is about about eleven o'clock, ten thirty, something like that. And then, which I don't have these bolted on, I just got them sitting in there just so I could tell where the cam's at. Then you can go through here, hand tighten these up. Now I'm going to take these back off and start putting the chain on. So now with everything clocked into place, I got the 24 millimeter wrench and I uh, moved it back just a little bit this way because you can see it still has pressure on that number one, but your piston's all the way up. You don't want that pushed down, especially when you tighten it up. So I moved this back just a little bit where that's all the way up. I tightened all the bolts down. And now I'm going to get this. I'm going to put this right here. Lock it down. So that's where it's going to stay. It's not going to put no pressure right there. Plus, it's going to put this close to where it needs to be to put the chain on. So I'm going to go ahead and get the chain guide on the left side and toss it down in there. All right, time for the timing chain. Make sure it's facing the outside so you can time it right. Drop it down in there. There's lumps on the top right and left right there. On the bottom side, kind of push that in first. Uh, it's, it's over it. There we go. That's how you get that on there. Really easy, right? You got it down here. Get it over your oiler. And drop quite a bit down there. So you have a lot of slack. crank at this time you can spin as much as you want to find your cam links get your sprockets with the diamond put that in your intake side colored link do the same thing for your exhaust side find the diamond or the arrow on this side get this on here not all the way on but where it can move And that's where it's supposed to be. Slide your tensioner up if you need to to get a little bit more slack in there. Find an arrow on your exhaust side. Put it where it needs to be. Make sure that one's on that link, which that's not. So I'm going to have to adjust that. It's the position of the guys and how everything's supposed to go. On ahead and I got this on. I'm about to put this guy on. Then I'm going to put the other guy on and put the tensioner in there. Security's loose. Checking everything. Uh, cam cap bolts. One of them broke on me. Luckily I could get some uh, needle nose and twist it out. But the sequence is the very center set of caps. You know, pretty much it's front to back. And then... You know, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Something like it. However it adds up. That's the sequence. And it's supposed to be it's supposed to be eighty inch pounds. So with me not being able to do that, I can still do everything else but that. I want to... right, so the torque for the sprocket boat caps. For these is 75 or 756 inch pounds that's for this wrench because it's an inch pound 63 foot pounds and then you go an additional 30 degrees so i'm gonna get the wrench in there I gotta get that back in there yet because I haven't got the tensioner on. I should have done that first. Now for the 30 degrees. Got it. Tensioner in there. Got that tightened up with a specially time and chain tensioner tool called pliers. Then to activate it, I got the other special tool called just a bar, push down on it, release that, spun a couple times, make sure everything's lined up, timed up, everything's good. 
I've not done this. Got the seal and your time and chain cover. <clears throat> I don't think dude, just put a screwdriver or something in there and pop it out. It comes out pretty easy. Get your new one. Get you some Vaseline to help go in there. Even. It go out like this as you see. The lips in the back. Lips in the back. The battery went dead on me. The battery got low, so it cut off. But what I did is I got the old seal. I had this white cap in there when it came, but put that on there. And I beat it down like that to try to keep it even. Then after that, I put this on there to finish it up. 36 millimeter. And pop the cap off. Then use Vaseline to go all around here. So when you slide it on, you don't burr it. It goes on real easy. And of course, like I said earlier, the heat will evaporate all this. And now, I got some brake cleaner. Put it on a rag. Went around the surfaces. Made sure it wasn't like terrible. Made sure it was nice and clean. Got the gasket put on there. Pretty self-explanatory. It has little pins. Pins right there that they sit on. So now, ready to put this on. We'll put that on him. Tighten the bolts. And tighten them up. Bolts from your special organized uh, boat bin that you put it all in. So you know exactly where it went to. When you're installing this, it has flats on each side with the key up top. Of course your key should be close to up top but your oil pump needs to be lined up on the sides so you can get your screwdriver if it's not and line it up be careful not to burr anything all right, I got the crank pulley on there. What I did was I heated it up a little bit, not enough to where it would scald the seal, but enough just to make it expand, kind of pushed it on there, twist it while going on there, lined it up, kind of like a torque converter. Heat it up, kind of expands the metal and helps it slide on there so you don't need no special tool or hammers. Uh, the boat you're supposed to reuse, but the torque's supposed to be 74 foot-pounds or 888 inch-pounds. Plus another hundred and of course if you want it to be right and go by the book then you can get your new boat. I'm not too worried about it. Now we're ready to put the exhaust manifold on, intake manifold, motor mounts and all that, the uh, servicing belt. Then tomorrow when I get some boats I want to do that. Nobody plans for doing a head gasket change. But you never know you might do it again so make sure. And I see these boats makes it easier to come off. Sometimes 